morning. Luke chapter 15, beginning at verse 28. Now, I want you to remain standing for another verse, another passage of scripture, rather. Luke chapter 15, verses 28, beginning at verse 28. And it says these words. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which thou devoured, which had devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto the, him, Son, thou art with ever with me, and all that I have is thy. It was meat that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again yes. and was lost and is found. Yes. Go with me, Lord told me to read this scripture too, because I might have the opportunity to touch on it, and you can read it. First Corinthians chapter nine, Corinthians chapter 9, beginning at verse 18. I tell you what, back up. There's a lot in this passage of scripture I need to read. Beginning at verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9. For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doeth God take care for oxen? Or saith he altogether for our sakes, for our sakes no doubt this is written, that he that ploweth shall plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used, but I have used none of these things, neither have I read these things that it should be done so unto me. For it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will a disposition of the gospel is committed unto me, what is my reward then? Verily that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. Verse 19, I want you to listen closely to these next few verses. But though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Listen to this now. And unto the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without the law, being not without law to God, but under the law of Christ, 
that I may gain them that are without the law. To the weak became I as weak, that I may gain the weak. I am made, I want you to listen to this next part of this verse, it's very important. I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Here it is a reading of the word of God. I want to continue our discussion as we have the past two Sundays, developing the right attitude for reaching the lost. And I want to, this morning, just kind of recap just a little bit of what we talked about the last, last couple of Sundays. There are two things you need to reach the lost. Sometimes the lost are out in the streets. Sometimes the lost are in the church. As you will find in this message this morning, Sometimes you can be lost in the street, and sometimes you can be lost in the house. Amen. And as we talked about that, there are two things that you need to be successful. You need the tools for winning the loss, and you need to have the right attitude. And developing the right attitude, you need to be compassionate. To be compassionate is to have empathy for others in their situation and not to think you are more important than them just because you're saved now. Because what you see is not what you get. Everybody sitting in here had always been saved. Amen. They dressed up, but they've been messed up. You gotta have compassion for people to recognize the fact that we all need the Lord and we all have come a long ways and we all make mistakes and we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all got some stuff in our trunks. Got some junk in our closets. And we all need the Lord. Somebody say, well I got I don't have many skeletons in my closet. You got some. Somebody's pointing out somebody else's 15 skeletons. You got two in yours. Doesn't matter how many you got, you still got sin. And we are messed up. We, we are not what we ought to be. And just as soon as we leave this church, we may engage in conversations that lead us to sin. We may engage in personalities that keep us sin. So you got to remember that as you minister to those who are unsaved, you got to remember that you yourself are still in need. And as Paul said, don't get caught up lest you also be tempted. Make sure you remember that you are not perfect. Your righteousness is but gifted right in the sight of God. And as we convene in this church this Sunday morning, as we sit in these pews this morning, none of us in here can say that we have arrived. Right. And we're still Amen. on our way. Amen. So you have to have compassion. Amen. Then you have to put forth an effort in developing an attitude to reach the lost. You gotta have compassion and you gotta put forth an effort to reach out to those who are unsaved. You can't isolate yourself and say you're better because you are in the church and they're not. You can't say you're better because they don't come to church as much as you. You can't say you're better because you give more than somebody else. You can't do that. That's not compassionate and that's not being a child of God. And that's not showing forth effort. What you got to keep in mind is not lift yourself up, but lift them up. But Jesus said if I be lifted up. I draw all men unto me. You, you got to talk some Jesus talk. You hear that song, I Need Just a Little More Jesus? Yes. Happy to be visiting BTW and 
a couple people were arguing back and forth on who needed more Jesus. <laughs> but I discovered that all of us need just a little more Jesus. From the pulpit to the back door. So you got to put forth some effort. And then the third thing necessary for developing the right attitude for reaching the laws is that you got to be persistent. Yes, sir. Let me tell you why you got to be persistent. Keep, keep at it. Keep at it. In, Genesis, in, in the book of Luke, chapter 15, the entire chapter is a chapter of persistence. Yes, sir. The first two parables deal with persistence. Man who lost the sheep kept looking until he found it. The woman who lost the coin kept searching until she found it. There was a level of persistence. She kept on going no matter what. She didn't give up. I I've come to tell you, don't give up on your children, parents. Don't give up on your neighbors, parents. Don't give up on your fellow friends, people. Don't give up on those who will not believe in Christ. Don't give up on them because, let me tell you something, is now won't be no more and you don't know what the future holds. Yeah. While we were trying to yeah. accept Jesus as our personal Savior, yes, somebody kept praying for yes. us. Yes. Somebody prayed for us. Yes, when we went and didn't have our mind on Jesus and didn't have our mind on the church, somebody kept praying for us. Somebody kept lifting us up. Somebody kept praying Jesus, come on! Yeah. I'm glad about it. Yeah. That even when I was hard hit, yeah. somebody kept me in mind. Yeah. So you got to put forth, be persistent. Yeah. The man who looked for the shepherd was persistent in this chapter. The man, the woman who searched for the coin was persistent. The woman who searched for the coin that was financial loss. The man who searched for the sheep that was physical loss, a property loss. Yeah. But isn't it interesting, the third part, the third parable in this 15th chapter of St. Luke, that nobody went out to search for this lost boy. Right. It's interesting that this boy came to his father and said, Father, I want everything that you got coming to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. 